Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with the Reverend Dr. Mark Richardson, President and Dean of the Church Divinity School of the Pacific. Dean Richardson has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Dean Richardson, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So in today's secular society, but where we also have globally these incredible debates um, surrounding the, the importance of theology, the Church Divinity School occupies a very interesting place in that dialogue. Talk about the importance of a theological education and what that actually means in today's world. I think uh, it's, a, it's an excellent question. We have uh, a real transition going on culturally. Uh, anybody who's looked at the Pew Report sees these major transitions going on in terms of people's relationship to traditional institutions within culture, religiously. And uh, all of the schools up to the Graduate Theological Union, of which Church Divinity School of the Pacific is one, we are a founding member, are facing the same conditions so that we know that it's not just our own school. We're all watching this culture change without any capacity to predict outcomes. How are you confronting that? Well, I think, first of all, one has to take a, a very generous attitude about what's going on in culture itself. This isn't the end. We sometimes talk about the distinction between religion and spirituality. If we dwell on that latter term for a moment, spirituality, um, this isn't the end of spirituality. There's still this quest for meaning that's part of the human condition, this, this sort of the depth dimension, maybe, of being human. Of this quest for something that's outside the self that allows one to pursue life with a sense of significance to it and purpose. And that's still there. And so tapping that is a different task today than one maybe 50 years ago where you could make assumptions about where people come from in uh, feeding and nourishing that aspect of who they are, which is really the wholeness of who they are. Talk about how the values that you teach in the classroom um, affect how you manage uh, the, the business operations of an organization like this. It's a really good question, and I, I have found that it's, um, it's a mistake, and I've had to grow into this. I've been in this position now for five or six years, but um, I've had to come to see that the programmatic elements of the school, which drive the mission, is not disconnected at all from the financial side of the school, the operations of the school. Those things, in a sense, have to reflect what you're doing in your mission. So the integration has to be there. It's a, it's a time of stress for theological schools because if the church or other religious organizations are in a time of transition, then by definition almost, theological education will be also. We have to excite those who are to receive the, the, the ministries coming out of the school. It's a professional degree program. Uh, we have to excite them with the power of future ministry to affect change in the world. So our curriculum, has shifted toward a far more practical disposition in preparing students for where they're going to be. We are doing community organizing classes with uh, Industrial Areas Foundation, for example, to help students with confidence at the interface of faith and public life so that they can encourage congregations to see that as part of their work. The mission of the church is not to serve just itself, but to be in the world. So how many students do you serve annually? We're a small school that has about, so we're a graduate program only and professional degrees, and there's about 100 people walking through our doors in the course of a year. Half of them approximately are in what we call low residence programs. They do not move from their homes, but they come together in cohort groups. They're reflecting an interesting demographic because they, they are mid-career. Some of them are professors. They come from the finance world, from a variety of professions. They do not see themselves necessarily, some of them do, but they don't see themselves as serving in a congregation as a, as a pastor or a priest, but almost like chaplains to cultures and its institutions. Then you have the in-residence program, which is the more typical one that we're used to hearing about, students who come, spend three, two years at, at uh, the school, and um, in community life uh, are involved in both. I would call it spiritual and emotional formation for leadership, as well as the academic rigors of um, theological work. Now we combine that with a, a PhD program, which includes us with some other schools in the Graduate Theological Union. So we're able to take advantage of the economy of scale of several schools 
feeding each other with faculty and students. How does theology interact with other systems like secular law, uh, secular government, um, science? I did work for about 10 years at the interface of theology and the natural sciences. And it ended in a project that was on the cover of Newsweek back in 1998 and held at Wheeler Hall in Berkeley. Very prominent scientists in biology, physics, uh, computational linguistics got together. They were atheists, Christian, Jewish, Muslim in background. And they were exploring the interface between um, theory which holds in their science and assumptions which hold in their spiritual experience. And what you saw at that level, which is a very high level of science, is uh, they did not need to have uh, imposed upon them the popular cultural view of opposition because they did not experience it. Um, they experienced the possibility of this interface just from their own work. Taking the idea of a theological education as being significant to business conduct, yes. political conduct, social conduct, the, the whole idea legal of legal life, yeah. um, how you spend your time. I look at sometimes the people who spend their time in, in particular ways and then use the excuse of, well, it's just my profession um, or this is what is being done without any thought of, of whether the way one is spending one's life is, is a moral uh, approach. But you deal with those issues every day in, in your programs. What I find uh, really important, and I think our faculty see this very clearly, it's a, fac uh, it's a really excellent faculty, that when that student leaves the school and they're in some role as an assistant clergy or some role in a congregation, they must get way beyond just getting to know, to know the names of the people in their congregation to really understanding the full life of that person. And urging a community towards seeing the effects of what they're praying, what they're believing, what they're saying in terms of the whole, so that there's an integrated life. Because the integrity is a key feature here of faith. Dean Richardson, thank you so much for engaging in this illuminating conversation, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you, Mark, for the opportunity to do this. I've enjoyed it very much in being with you.